Anandamayi Ma, born Nirmala Sundari, the 30th of April 1896 to the 27th of August 1982, was an Indian Hindu spiritual leader, described by Sivananda Saraswati of the Divine Life Society as the most perfect flower the Indian soil has produced. Precognition, faith healing, and miracles were attributed to her by her followers. Paramahansa Yogananda translates the Sanskrit epithet Anandamayi as joy permeated in English. This name was given to her by her devotees in the 1920s to describe her perpetual state of divine joy. Biography Early life Anandamayi was born Nirmala Sundari Devi, Nirmala Sundari Nirmala Shundari, English, Immaculate, Beautiful Goddess. On 30 April 1896 to the orthodox Vaishnava Brahmin couple Bipinbahari Bhattacharya and Mokshada Sundari Devi in the village of Kiora, Brahmanbaria district, now in present-day Bangladesh. Her father, originally from Vidyakat in Tripura, was a Vaishnavite singer known for his intense devotion. Both parents were from well-regarded lineages, though the family lived in poverty. Nirmala attended a village school for approximately two years. Although her teachers were pleased with her ability, her mother worried about her daughter's mental development because of her constantly indifferent and happy demeanor. When her mother once fell seriously ill, relatives too remarked with puzzlement about the child remaining apparently unaffected. In 1908 at the age of 13, in keeping with the rural custom at the time, she was married to Ramani Mohan Chakrabarti of Vikramapura, whom she would later rename Bolanath. She spent five years after her marriage at her brother-in-law's home, attending to housework in a withdrawn meditative state much of the time. It was here that a devout neighbor Harakumar, who was widely considered insane, recognized and announced her spiritual eminence, developed a habit of addressing her as Ma, and prostrated before her morning and evening in reverence. When Nirmala was about 17, she went to live with her husband who was working in the town of Ashtagram. In 1918, they moved to Bahitpur, where she stayed until 1924. It was a celibate marriage. Whenever thoughts of lust occurred to Ramani, Nirmala's body would take on the qualities of death. On the full moon night of August 1922, at midnight, 26 year old Nirmala enacted her own spiritual initiation. She explained that the ceremony and its rites were being revealed to her spontaneously as and when they were called for. Although uneducated on the matter, the complex rites corresponded to those of traditional, ancient Hinduism, including the offerings of flowers, the mystical diagrams yantras, and the fire ceremony yagna. She later stated, As the master guru, I revealed the mantra, as the disciple shishya, I accepted it and started to recite it. <laughs> Dhaka Nirmala moved to Shabag with her husband in 1924, where he had been appointed as the caretaker of the gardens of the Nawab of Dhaka. During this period Nirmala went into ecstasies at public kirtans. Jyotiskandra Ray, known as Bai Ji, was an early and close disciple. He was the first to suggest that Nirmala be called Anandamayi Ma, meaning, Joy Permeated Mother, or Bliss Permeated Mother. He was chiefly responsible for the first ashram built for Anandamayi Ma in 1929 at Ramna, within the precinct of the Ramna Kali Mandir. In 1926, she reinstated a formerly abandoned ancient Kali temple in the Sideshwari area. During the time in Shabag, more and more people began to be drawn to what they saw to be a living embodiment of the divine. From this point onwards, various scholars were drawn to Anandamayi Ma's spirituality and teaching, though she continued to describe herself as a little unlettered child. Mahamahapadhyay Gopinath Kavaraj, Sanskrit scholar, philosopher, and principal of Sanskrit college in Kolkata and Triguna Sen were among her early followers. Uday Shankar, the famous dance artist, was impressed by Anandamayi Ma's analysis of dance, which she used as a metaphor for the relationship between people and God. She was a contemporary of the well-known Hindu saints like Udaya Baba and Paramahansa Yogananda. Topic. Death. Ma died on 27 August 1982 in Dehradun, and subsequently on 29 August 1982 a samadhi shrine was built in the courtyard of her Kankal ashram, situated in Haridwar in North India. Teachings 
Anandamayi Ma never prepared discourses, wrote down, or revised what she had said. People had difficulty transcribing her often informal talks because of their conversational speed. Further the Bengali manner of alliterative wordplay was often lost in translation. However a devotee, Brahmachari Kamal Bhattacharya, made attempts to transcribe her speech before audio recording equipment became widely available in India. A central theme of her teaching is, "...the supreme calling of every human being is to aspire to self-realization. All other obligations are secondary. And, "...only actions that kindle man's divine nature are worthy of the name of actions." However she did not advise everyone to become a renunciate. She would dismiss spiritual arguments and controversies by stating that, "...everyone is right from his own standpoint." She did not give formal initiations and refused to be called a guru, as she maintained that, "...all paths are my paths," and, "...I have no particular path." She did not advocate the same spiritual methods for all. How can one impose limitations on the infinite by declaring this is the only path? And, why should there be so many different religions and sects? Because through every one of them he gives himself to himself, so that each person may advance according to his inborn nature." She herself has said, Ref. Mother reveals herself, all forms of sadhana, known and unknown, just occurred to her in the form of a lila play without any conscious effort on her part. Thus her sadhana can not be slotted into a specific area, for to do so would mean that she was somehow limited to that area and her mastery was also limited. She welcomed and conversed with devotees of different religions from Shaivite, Vaishnavas, Tantric, or from Islam, Christianity, Zoroastrianism. Everyone was welcome and she was equally at ease while giving guidance to all practitioners of different faiths. Even now, the Muslim population of Kiora still refer to her as our own Ma. She taught how to live a God-centered life in the world and provided the living inspiration to enable thousands to aspire to this most noble ideal. She also advocated spiritual equality for women, for example, she opened up the sacred thread ritual, which had been performed by men only for centuries, to women, but only those who met the moral and personal requirements. Her style of teaching included jokes, songs and instructions on everyday life along with long discourses, silent meditation and recommended reading of scriptures. Paramhansa Yogananda wrote about her in his book Autobiography of a Yogi. His meeting with her is recounted in the chapter titled, The Bengali Joy Permeated Mother, where she explains her background. Father, there is little to tell. She spread her graceful hands in a deprecatory gesture. My consciousness has never associated itself with this temporary body. Before I came on this earth, father, I was the same. As a little girl, I was the same. I grew into womanhood, but still I was the same. When the family in which I had been born made arrangements to have this body married, I was the same. And, Father, in front of you now, I am the same. Ever afterward, though the dance of creation change around me in the hall of eternity, I shall be the same. The publication department of the Sri Sri Anandamayi Charitable Society in Kolkata regularly publishes her teaching in the periodical Anandavarta quarterly. The Sri Sri Anandamayi Sangha in Haridwar organizes the annual Samyam Mahavrata congregation to devote a week to collective meditation, religious discourse and devotional music. See also Bhakti Yoga Robert Adams Ravi Shankar References Topic Bibliography Topic External Links Anandamayi Ma at Curly Works by or about Anandamayi Ma at Internet Archive A Timeline of Events Matravani, a compendium of Anandamayi's teachings The personal papers of Anandamayi are in the Andover Harvard Theological Library at Harvard Divinity School in Cambridge, Massachusetts.